before you ever enter any options trade please make sure you know how to close it i'll pin a video in the comment section below where i show you guys how to close out of any options trade now first of all what is theta decay because i do talk a lot about theta decay uh, but today i want to focus on how you can avoid it now for those of you that are not familiar with theta decay let me just run through that here very quickly so let's go into the options here for netflix so ticker symbol NFLX and let's just take a look at one of these call options here so if I click on this call option here at the $225 strike if I click on it notice that you see the Greeks down here and then you see five different Greeks so theta is one of these Greeks as you can see here right now theta decay uh, is going to be the rate of decline in the value of an option due to the passage of of time so we know how much that's going to be for this particular option here right because it gives us the number now basically what this is saying here is that in one day just from time passing by you can expect the value of this option to lose 0.5314 now keep in mind this is per share each contract controls 100 shares so if we multiply this by 100 we get negative 53.14 so that's basically saying if everything holds constant right the value of this option will lose $53.14 in one day just from time passing by so if you buy this call and you hold it for one day and nothing really happens to Netflix you're gonna lose $53 just from holding it. That's a lot of money. And if you look at options like Tesla, for example, the, the Tesla options, that can be as high as four or $500 in one day. So you can lose a lot of money just from theta decay. And so that's why in today's video, I wanna talk about three different ways you can avoid theta decay so that you don't end up losing a lot of money just from time passing by. So let's get into the first way that you can avoid theta decay. So the first way you can avoid theta decay is by buying deep in the money options. Why? Because you got to realize this, the at the money options have the most exposure to theta decay, meaning theta is going to be the highest for at the money options the more in the money you go or the more out of the money you go the lower theta decay becomes now out of the money options can get very risky because sometimes the stock needs to move a lot for it to reach the strike price which is why i would go for the in the money options so let me kind of clarify a little bit of what i just said so remember the at the money option is the option whose strike price is as close to the current share price as possible. So the current share price is 224.90. The strike with the closest price to that is the strike at the $225, which is the one I showed you. This is the at the money option. Now, the higher up you go from here, the more out of the money you go. And that's also going to be the options that are cheaper. Now, the farther down you go below the at the money option, this, these are going to be the in the money options and they're also going to be more expensive. So basically what I just said is that the at the money option is going to be the option that has the highest theta decay. The more out of the money you go, the less theta is going to be. As you can see, for example, with this one, theta is only 0.17. However, again, with out of the money options that are a lot more riskier because now Netflix has to move a lot more by expiration for you to actually make money. So that's why I say the in the money options because the in the money options are already in the money. And so if we take a look here, for example, at like this one at the $210 strike and we look at the theta here, Again, notice theta is less. So theta, for example, on this one, it's only going to be $32. So you're only going to lose $32 from time passing by. That is quite a bit different than the at the money option, right? The at the money option is $53. So again, the deeper in the money you go, the less theta is going to be. If we went to like the 190 strike, notice that theta here now is only $19, right? So it keeps going uh, you know, down and down here, the more in the money we go. Now, of course, there is a con here, and you guys can probably already see it. The con here, of course, is that the in the money options, and the more in the money you go, the more expensive these options become, right? This option that we're looking at right now 
would cost you $3,700 versus the at the money option, which is only what, $530, right? So it does get pretty expensive, but keep that in mind that the more in the money you go, the less data is going to be, therefore the less you're gonna lose just from time passing by. So that's the first way you can avoid theta decay. Now let's move on to the second way that you can avoid theta decay. So the second way you can avoid it uh, is you buy the option, you buy an option with a further out expiration date. Why is this? Because theta gets bigger the closer that you get to the expiration date. So the further away you go, right, the, the, the further out you go for the expiration, you're further away from it, theta is going to be less. The closer you get to it, the higher it's going to be. So if you use the first expiration, it's going to be pretty high. But if we go out a week, a month, a year, the further out we go, the less theta is going to be. And so let me show you that right here, right now. So again, remember that the theta on this, the, the at the money option here for August 5th expiration, theta is $53. Now look what happens if I go just one week out to August 12th and I look at the same option, the same strike. So the 225, I click on it. Now look at theta, $33 right so again expiration matters here because again theta is going to be the highest the closer you get to the expiration so the further out you go the less theta is going to be if i went out like a month let's say to like september 2nd and i take a look at the option at the 225 dollars strike theta is going to be even lower take a look 19 dollars. right you're losing less from time passing by why because there's still quite a bit of time uh, until September 2nd, right? So there's still quite a bit of time for this stock to move in the direction you want it to move. The closer you are to the expiration, there's less time now for the stock to move in the direction you want it to move. So theta starts to eat at it quite a bit. So that's the second way. Now, of course, again, the same con applies here. The further out you go, the more expensive these options are going to be. So remember, for the, for the uh, August 5th expiration, this option at the $225 strike is $500. Here going out about a month, it ends up costing $1,285. So more than twice as much. Uh, but of course, this also gives you more time for the stock to move in the direction that you want it to move. And like I mentioned, the further out you go, the less theta is going to be. So again, number one would be going deeper in the money. Number two would be going out to a further expiration date. Now I'm going to show you guys here number three, which would be my personal preference is what I personally would do if I wanted to avoid theta decay as much as possible. So number three is going to be using spreads instead. Okay. Again, this is my favorite option. This is the option that I would go for. So by spreads, I mean call debit spread and a put debit spread, depending on if you're bearish or if you're bullish, right? So let me show you a bullish example. So again, we saw over here uh, on August 5th, right? That if I bought this call here at the $225 strike, uh, again, just from time passing by in one day, I would lose $53. So now let's take a look at what happens if I entered a call debit spread instead. Okay, so basically in a call debit spread, you're still gonna buy this call here, and so theta is still going to affect you for the call you bought, but now what you do is you go ahead and you also sell a call, and you would sell a call with a higher strike than the strike of the call you bought. So I would go and sell a call up here. So let me just sell the call right above it, right here. So this is a call debit spread. It's gonna cost 130. So it is also cheaper, by the way, than just buying a call by itself. So that's, that's a pro there, that it is cheaper than just buying the call by itself. And as you see, it's still gonna be a bullish strategy here. Now, how does this help us with theta decay? Because again, like I mentioned, you're still buying this call, right? You're still gonna lose uh, $53, $53, from uh, buying this and time passing by. But now we're also selling a call, right? We're selling the call right above it. And take a look at what happens with this call that we're selling. If I switch to sell, notice theta becomes positive here, right? It goes from being negative if you buy to if you sell, it's positive. So basically when you sell a call, theta decay 
is good for you. You want time to pass by because you're going to make money from time passing by. So here's what's happening, right? We're buying this call down here. And yes, we're going to lose $53 from time passing by. But now for the call that we're selling, when time passes by, we're actually going to make that amount. So instead of losing $52, we're actually making $52 here. So basically what's happening is for the call you bought, you're losing $53 from time passing by, but from the call you sold, you're making $52, meaning you're only losing $1 from time passing by in one day here. Versus if you only buy the call, you're gonna lose $53, right? So this is a really great way to avoid theta decay. As you guys can see here, we went from losing $53 in one day from time passing by to now we would only lose $1. And again, that's because we're also selling this call. When you sell an option, theta decay is a good thing. You actually make that amount rather than losing it. So we'd only end up losing $1 here in a day using the call debit spread. Now, what's the con here? The con here is that unfortunately it does put a cap on your max profit. And if you can see this here, uh, you, looking at Robinhood's PL chart, uh, your max profit is only going to be $142. Remember, if you buy a call, that's all you do, your max profit is unlimited upside potential. But here, when you uh, transform it into a call debit spread, you unfortunately do cap your profit which again, in this particular example would be $142. But again, also remember that this is gonna be way cheaper than just buying the call. And again, this will help you with theta decay. It will also help you from, a, uh, from IV crush as well, which is something that I've also talked about quite a bit in the past. So anyways, those are three ways you can avoid theta decay as much as possible. Again, the first one is by going deeper in the money. Theta is going to be less. Number two, choosing a further out expiration. Theta is also going to be less. Again, the two cons there is that they are also going to be more expensive options as well. Number three, which again is my favorite, is by turning it, in, turning it into a spread, right? We turned this call that someone would buy and turned it into a call debit spread just by selling a call right above it, okay? So anyways, if you guys have any questions about anything I just talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Check out the Discord, link to it in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next time.